Hey traders, in this recap video, I'm going to walk you through a major economic event and it's not even necessarily, you know, about Forex. It's really any time we have a high impact event. And in this case, when it comes to currencies, there's really nothing more high impact than central bank decisions. So we've got the Bank of England where the market was anticipating a 25 basis point hike. It wasn't talked about a lot, but it was it was baked in. In other words, traders knew this was coming. And so one would think, hey, once you get a 25 basis point hike, doesn't that send the currency higher? And one of the things I talked about in the premium video for members yesterday was, yeah, not necessarily. In fact, we could look for some pound weakness on that event because it had been anticipated so widely. So fast forward to the pound New Zealand, which is one of my favorite currencies to take advantage of pound weakness in a buy. In other words, if we get a correction on the pound weakness, where can I step in and buy pound? And in this case, sell New Zealand dollar. This was my favorite place to look for it. We had a number of places we were looking. This was the one that had a trend. Okay. So the first place I looked on the initial reaction was the 480 minute time frame, because the 480 had a daily price movement range expectation of exhausting. As you can see, these are notes from the chat room this morning what I call a REL or a range extreme low at 9014 and the upper end, what we call rare air at 8951. And if you take a look at this short term intraday time frame, for a brief amount of time, you can see right in here, it looked like we nailed it. It looked like, okay, this is going to be it until it wasn't. And then you can see what's happened subsequently. So this is not me walking you through, you know, some winning trade. What I'm walking you through here is how do you get out of a trade quickly when it's not moving in your favor? How do you make sure you don't overstay your welcome? So if you take a look back at our, our main plans, we knew the rare error could take us to 89.45. Look how tight that stop is then, right? Look how tight. If we're basically looking for a market to take us to 89.51 and a stop would then be 89.45, it's six pips. OK, now, if you're comfortable taking the range extreme low, which was 9014, your stop really is still in either. We had a couple different stops we, we were looking at. In fact, one of the things we do in the morning and, and whether you're in the chat room or whether you're a member who can't attend the chat, we send these alerts out. They either hit your phone as an SMS or they're available instantly on our simpler trading mobile app. So the thing that I was looking at was an 89.75 stop. So there's a couple things you could have done. If your risk tolerance is high, you take 90.14 with an 89.45 stop, or you take 90.14 with an 89.75 stop. We kept these stops very tight because either, either we catch a bid and the market's recognizing a level that we have identified as historically relevant to exhaustion, or it doesn't, we give the market a little bit of room to move, and then we bail. Okay. So what I'm showing you here was two examples of two very tight stops within a very volatile market. And, and this is what scares a lot of traders about trading any market, especially currencies. What happens if, what if there's this great big move? How do I get in? How do I get out all that fear? And what I'm showing you here is two very quick stops. One is small as six pips and it was no problem executing that exit because this is a very, very liquid market. Forex is very liquid. So you can see in the way, the way in which we continue to move lower. Now, let me give you a bonus here since you've hung out this long. I still want to buy. The problem with the trade, well, if there's a problem at all, if the problem with this market is it just hasn't caught a bid. And the 480, while it could absorb much of the shock, can't absorb where we are right now, which is so much more than the typical 68% probability of what normally happens in this pair. Partly a lot of pound weakness and actually a fairly strong New Zealand dollar this morning. So what we do is we take a look at the daily time frame and ask, well, this is still an uptrend. What's the next level we could look at? And the next level I'm going to look at, and I'm going to continue to take advantage of the weakness. If it can keep going you know, lower and lower, I'm looking now at an 8735 entry. That 8735 entry is going to have an 8595 stop loss. So you might say, wait a minute, now we're talking bigger risk. We are, because now this is more of a swing buy. This is not the kind of entry that I would take on a volatile day when the market's selling off.
Okay. Now you might ask, well, Rog, why are you looking at the at the uh, buy? Why aren't you looking at a short? You know, there are ways to take advantage of a short. And once we got stopped out, some traders were looking at the intraday five minute. But ultimately, I always want to look for the uh, the ability to follow the trend. You know, we bought Pound New Zealand before, and that's been a great trend. In fact, the last time we bought, bought Pound New Zealand, the subsequent move was a thousand pips. Okay, so we we've, we've looked at this before. We've we've set this one up before, and again, the last time we looked at this, it was a thousand pips on the follow through. So yes, this is a dramatic move to the downside, no doubt about it. Ninety two, basically the one the ninety two area to about eighty eighty nine. So that's about three hundred pips, no doubt. But it's a very volatile move on a bet that the pound would weaken on a rate hike. That's not the kind of thing that I think most currency traders are looking for. We'd rather follow the flow. We'd rather follow what is a hawkish central bank. And in this case, a weak pound versus, uh, sorry, a strong pound versus a weak New Zealand longer term. But right now, getting opportunistic on the fact that the pound is selling off and could give us that next swing buy. Okay, hope this trade, this uh, is a little bit more advanced, I guess. I uh, hope this video was helpful. Uh, review it as uh, you wish, and hopefully it's going to give you a lot of insight into how to handle these major volatility events like a central bank event. And by the way, you know, we have things like non-farm payroll coming up this week. The strategy, the approach is exactly the same. All right, see you in the next update.